My name is Rick Renner, and I'm in the ancient city of Jericho, where God gave the people of Israel a great victory. God helped them, God empowered them, and the walls of Jericho fell. But before the victory took place, God said to them, there are some things you can take from the city, and there are some things you cannot take. And if you take those things that I forbid you to take, he called them the accursed thing, a curse will come on you. Listen to what God said in Joshua chapter 6, verse 18. And ye, in any wise keep yourself from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Well, we know that's exactly what happened. A man named Achan couldn't resist. Actually, the whole people of Israel did well. They obeyed the Lord. But there was one among them, this man named Achan. And he saw something that he wanted to steal. He just could not resist, so he secretly took it. He took it home, dug a hole in his tent, put it in the earth, covered it up, thought no one would know, but the Lord knew. The Lord sees everything. You may think you're sliding by with your acts of disobedience. God sees it all. And we need to understand, God is so good, He'll give us great victories. But if we do wrong, we can open the door for trouble to come back into our lives. And that's exactly what happened because of the sin of Achan. God did everything to bless the people, empower the people, help the people. He even gave Israel the whole city of Jericho. But one man, because of his disobedience, brought trouble into the camp of Israel. That's how serious is sin. Sin can defile your victory. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. My name is Rick Renner, and I'm so glad you've joined me for the program. Today, I'm going to talk to you like my friend. I want to talk to you about victory. God wants you to have victory in your life. But what often happens is people have victory, and then after that, they have a miserable defeat. Why does defeat often follow victory? That's what we're going to look at today. God does not want you to have defeat in your life. He really wants you to go from victory to victory to victory. And if you've suffered a defeat, there's a reason why. And you need to know why, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. But I'm speaking to you from my series, which is called, God has given you the victory. And he really was. He really has. Jesus died and was raised from the dead so you can walk into victory in your life. And this series is designed to help you walk into it. It comes with a great study guide. It's available on our website. And I'm also offering you right now my book, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. The back of the book says, Are you ready for a life filled with adventure? If you'll do what God tells you to do, you will step into victory. But you have to explicitly follow God's orders. We've seen this in the story of Joshua and the children of Israel as they came to take the city of Jericho. They had to do exactly what God said to do, even though it didn't make natural sense. You don't always have to understand what God tells you to do, but you have to do what He tells you to do. And if you'll obey Him explicitly, wow. Your obedience will attract to you victory, power, provision, protection. And by the way, that's what this book is about. The subtitle says, Positioning Yourself to Live in God's Supernatural Power, Provision, and Protection, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. But what if you've had a very high-level victory and then suffered a defeat? Why was that defeat a follow-up to such a great victorious moment? Well, this happened to the children of Israel in the book of Joshua, and this is what we're going to look at today. So I hope you've got your Bible. Open your Bible to Joshua chapter 7. And today we're going to dive into these verses and find out some very important things that really have great relevance for our lives. We're going to begin in Joshua chapter 7 and verse 1, where the Bible says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed thing and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. First of all, the Bible says they committed a 
trespass. We've seen in previous programs, this was not just a low-level sin. A trespass is a violation. In other words, you don't do it accidentally. You know you're doing it wrong. That's what a trespass is. You know what's right, you know what's wrong, and you choose to do wrong. That is a violation. That is a trespass. The children of Israel were told very clearly, when you take the city of Jericho, none of the goods there are for you. Everything in the city is consecrated to the Lord because it was a first fruit offering. They had just come into the land of promise. Jericho was the first city they were going to take, and everything in Jericho belonged to the Lord. God was teaching the principle of the first fruit offering or of the tithe. Now later, God would say to the children of Israel as they plundered other cities, everything in those cities is yours. But this was God's. It's like the tithe. 10% belongs to the Lord. That is His. That is not ours. And when we take it and use it for ourselves. Even though we think it's going to help us, it becomes accursed. It's not ours. And the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. They took from the city of Jericho, actually one man by the name of Achan, he stole something, took it into his tent, and hid it. He trespassed the commandment of the Lord. And it brought a curse on all of Israel. And the end of verse 1 says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And we find out the Lord's displeasure in verse 2. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Haven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up, and they viewed Ai. Now it's interesting. Joshua at this point is very confident, and it seems to me he's acting presumptuously. He has no direct orders from God to attack Ai that he's had such a victory in Jericho that he's ready to take the next city. So without heavenly instructions, he begins to take action. You could say this is presumptuous behavior. The city of Ai was a small city. The Bible tells us that. And he assumed it would be a very easy city to take. Verse 3 says, And they, that is the spies, returned to Joshua and said unto him. Now notice who Joshua was listening to. In verse 3, he's not listening to the voice of God, but he's listening to his spies. Be careful who you listen to. You need to listen to good advice, but in the end, you need to obey what God says, not what people around you say. But in verse 3, they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but a few. So in the eyes of the spies, this would be an easy city to take because it was a small city. They said, you know, 2,000, 3,000, we don't need any more men than this to take the whole city of Ai. But again, this time, Joshua was not listening to the voice of God. He was listening to the voice of his spies. Be careful who you listen to. Be sure to listen to good counsel. But at the end of the day, you've got to follow the counsel of the Spirit of God not the counsel of those that are around you. Listen to them. God may speak to you through them, but make sure you're following the voice of the Spirit, not just the voice of people. This was the mistake which Joshua made in this verse, and because of that, he acted presumptuously. Notice what the verse says in verse 4. So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. When the Bible says they fled, it means they fled in terror. This was a humiliating defeat after they had just had such a victory in Jericho. Verse 5, And the men of Ai smote them, about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. The enemy literally slaughtered thirty-six of the men of Israel. The Bible says they chased them. This was humiliating. They didn't just chase them, they smote them. This word smote implies that when they killed them, they didn't just kill them, they massacred them. This was a horrible slaughtering that took place of these 36 men. They literally struck them down. Now you may wonder, how could such a small people, a small army, chase the men of Israel? How could this happen? That's what happens when you act presumptuously out of the will of God. It's so very important that you do what God tells you to do and not what people tell you to do. 
the heart of Israel melted. They sank. They were humiliated. They were broken. They were embarrassed. Defeat is humiliating, especially after you've just had a great victory. And the Bible tells us in verse 6, And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until evening tide, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust upon their heads. In verse 6, we find five very important things. First of all, it says Joshua rent his clothes. This is not just drama. This means he was repentant. This represents sorrow. He was rending his clothes. Joshua is sorrowful before the Lord that he's acted presumptuously. He's sorrowful that they have lost their victory. Not only that, he fell on the earth on his face. This represents humility. He is really broken before the Lord. He fell before the ark of the Lord. This means he was in the presence of God. He was truly seeking the face of God. And the Bible says he did it with his leaders until the evening tide, which means this was no rushing into the presence of God and rushing out with forgiveness. He was earnestly seeking the face of God from morning till evening. He was putting his whole heart into this, taking real inventory, saying, God, please show me where I've done wrong. Where have we done wrong? Why did we suffer this defeat after having such a great victory in Jericho? And you know what? If you're really serious to seek the face of God about why you're having defeat, God will answer you. Joshua was serious and God answered him. And the Bible says, that they put dust on their heads, this was a symbol of repentance. They were really repentant in the presence of God. When you are repentant, God will respond to you. But notice what the next verse says. Verse 7, And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God, that we would have been tent and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. Joshua didn't mean a word of this. He didn't mean a word of this. He knew that God didn't bring him across the Jordan for defeat, and they would not have been content to live in the wilderness. He didn't mean any of this. This was his emotion speaking. And you've got to be careful that when you've had a very defeating moment, your emotions don't engulf you. He was engulfed in his emotions. And when you're engulfed in your emotions, very often you say a bunch of nonsense that you don't really mean. And that's what Joshua was doing here. Verse 8, O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? Verse 9, For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around and cut off our name from the earth. And then he puts it on God. What wilt thou do unto thy great name? God, are you not concerned about your reputation? No, God really was not concerned about his reputation. God does not need to defend his reputation. But then we find in verse 10, The Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? What does that mean when God said, Get thee up? It was the equivalent of saying, Get up, enough is enough. Why are you laying in the dust on your face? Repentance was complete. It was time to get up and get moving. Once repentance is done, God accepts it, and there's no need to give into emotional drama that prolongs pain. Are you listening careful to me? I'm going to say it to you again. Once repentance is done, God accepts it, and there's no need to give into emotional drama that prolongs pain. Listen careful. Repentance is required, but getting stuck in regret doesn't take you anywhere or produce anything positive or helpful in your life. Once a person has repented, God says, get up, get off your face, get back to doing what I've called you to do. Now, repentance is real. If you've made a mistake, repentance is required. But laying on your face and moaning and groaning and getting stuck in regret doesn't change a thing. It's just prolonged drama that does nothing for anybody. It doesn't gain you any greater standing with God. And eventually, God says, that's enough. Get up. Get off your face. Why are you laying on your face? There's still territory in front of you to take. And I want to tell you, friend, even if you've lost some territory because of a personal mistake, 
get off your face. If you've already asked God to forgive you, He has forgiven you. If you've sought His face and asked for the blood of Jesus to wash away that mistake, that sin, that transgression, it's been removed. It's time for you to get up and get moving. Hey, there's still territory in front of you. God has something for you to do. He really does. God has a plan for you. A mistake has not derailed your destiny. You still have a destiny in front of you. There's still something in front of you for you to conquer. There's an enemy for you to defeat. There's ground for you to take. And God wants you to get up and get moving. No one in the Bible was perfect. Everybody made mistakes. Everybody. Seek forgiveness. Get up and get moving. That's what God said to Joshua. He said, it's time for you to get up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? If you've messed up, repent. Then get up and do what God has told you to do. God is with you. But in Joshua 7, verse 11, the Bible says, Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing and have stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. And here you find five things that Israel did that really caused them to fall into defeat. Number one, they transgressed God's commandment. They violated, they did what they knew they were not supposed to do. Actually, it was Achan, but Achan's sin affected everyone in the group. Number two, they stole. This also is a violation. They took what did not belong to them. It belonged to God. Next, they dissembled. That word dissembled means they lied. And last, they hid what they did. They put it under the earth in Achan's tent. Look at this. They transgressed, they stole, they lied, they hid. My friend, none of that's going to produce good fruit. You've got to get honest with God about where you are. Quit hiding, quit lying, come before God, lay it all before Him, and be honest, and you'll be restored. And by the way, when you're restored, you'll be put, put back on the road to victory. Listen to what Joshua 7, 12 says. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, mm. but turned their back before their enemies because they were accursed. And God says, neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy the accursed thing from among you. You know, when you're in sin and you know that you're doing wrong, you cannot expect blessing. If you're transgressing the commandment of the Lord, if you're transgressing, violating God's directions, and then you ask for His blessing, my friend, you're living in a very conflicted state. You're not going to expect experience God's blessing when you're living in a transgression or in a violation. And unfortunately, some people just live a violation. Their whole life is a violation of the Word of God. They're living in sin. They're not doing right. They're not giving their tithe. They're not obeying the Bible. They're doing things that are wrong while they're simultaneously asking God to bless them. It just doesn't work that way. It just does not work that way, my friend. When you're living in a violation, God cannot bless you. This verse says the protection of God departed from them because of the violation that was in the camp. And this is why it's so very imperative that you get before God and say, God, show me. Lord, I've suffered a defeat. I need to know why. And if you sincerely want the Holy Spirit to show you, the Holy Spirit will open it up to you. He'll give you a revelation. You may be unaware of what you've done that is wrong. You may have sincerely violated something. The Holy Spirit wants to show you. And if you'll seek His face, the Holy Spirit will show you the source of your defeat. He really will. And a wonderful verse that I love so much, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all iniquity. Wow! This phrase, if we confess our sin, oh, the Greek word means really if we agree with God, if we get honest with God, if we quit hiding what we did, and if we just say, God, this is what we did, this is what is wrong, if we just get honest with God and confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us. You know what that word forgive is? It's a Greek word, aphiemi. The word aphiemi means to release, to send away, to permanently discharge, and never bring it up again. God will send it away. He'll bring your 
send your charge away from you. He will release you from your offense and he will cleanse you. That word cleanse means to totally cleanse, not just an exterior cleansing, but the deepest, deepest kind of cleansing. God will make you like you never, ever sinned. He's just waiting for you to confess. And actually, that's what we find here in Joshua chapter 7. God was wanting the people of Israel to take spiritual inventory, to find out what they had done wrong, to repent of it, so that his protection would be returned to them and they could get back on track with victory. This failure was never the will of God. Your defeat was never the plan of God for you. If you'll be honest, your defeat is probably because of something you did wrong along the way. If you hadn't acted presumptuously, if you hadn't listened only to the advice of others and you'd been listening to the Lord, if you hadn't lied or stole or hid what you did wrong and just been honest with God, you could have quickly been beyond this and retained your victory. But because you did something wrong, a trespass, a violation, you broke a principle, mm, and defeat came. Well, it's time for you to get back on track with victory. God has victory planned for your life. Get in the presence of God. God is not berating you. God's not requiring of you an emotional drama like Joshua was doing in this chapter. God just wants you to get honest and get in a position where he can speak to you. And then God's going to say to you like he did to Joshua, now get up, get off your face. Why are you laying in the dirt? It's time for you to move on. Let's not have prolonged drama because of what you've been through. There's still territory for you to take. God's got something for you to do, my friend. He's got something for your business for your family, for your marriage, for you, for your children. God's got a marvelous plan for you, and God wants you to get back on track with victory. Do you see how powerful this is and how important it is for us to understand why, why we've suffered defeat? We need to know why. Defeat is never the will of God. He wants us to go from victory to victory, and if we've been derailed somewhere along the way, then we need to get in the presence of God and we need to find out why. We're out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Are you facing something that seems impossible? Does it feel like all hell has come against you? You can have the victory today. In Rick Renner's five-part teaching series, God has given you the victory. Rick journeys through the Old Testament story of the Battle of Jericho and how the nation of Israel won the battle and saw the walls come tumbling down. If you have walls of opposition in your life, forces and enemies that seem to be blocking your every move. This series will show you how to overcome those enemies and have victory in your life. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10 when you call or go online right now. In addition to the teaching series, you can also receive the book, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Knowing God's plan is essential for every believer. In this book, Rick answers the hard questions about the often misunderstood subject of hearing God's voice and how you can know His will for your life. During this critical time, you'll understand how to operate with the right people, at the right place, at the right time. Whether you're a mother, grandmother, in business or in school, being able to hear and know God's will for your life is essential to your success. The fundamental teaching book can be yours for just $17. Don't miss this special offer. God has given you the victory and or the companion book, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Call now, 1-800-742-5593, or go to renner.org to order. Get these two powerful resources today. Call or go online now. My name is Joel Renner, coming to you from Moscow, Russia. And I want to say thank you to all of our ministry partners. Your support is bringing about the revival of the Bible. Today, it seems church and society is moving away from the Bible and more and more towards motivational messages. Many people will read all kinds of self-help books while ignoring the Bible or simply making it another resource book. Our lives should be built on what the Bible has to say, and we desire that everyone experience a revival of the Bible in their lives. Over many decades, the support of our partners has helped plant many churches in different countries. Today, our central church is located in Moscow, Russia, and we provide trusted Bible teaching from the Bible as our only source of absolute truth. Moscow is a beautiful city of more than 20 million people. Our ministry is working to start several affiliate churches throughout this vast city 
so that the revival of the Bible can be expanded on this side of the world too. Will you consider joining us as a partner so that we can help bring a revival of the Bible to even more people right here at home as well as around the world? The vision you support and that we are here to accomplish is this, to take the gospel of Christ both to our nearby world and to the ends of the earth. Please call 1-800-742-5593 or go online to rental.org. In Joshua 7, 10, God said to Joshua, get off your face, get your face out of the dirt. There's still something for you to do. Joshua and the people of Israel had suffered a defeat and they were embarrassed. You know, when you're embarrassed, you're really embarrassed. You're humiliated. And Joshua was on his face. He didn't want to look at anybody else. He certainly didn't want to look at the people of Israel or look at his enemies. He was just embarrassed. He was crying out, God, why has this happened? He even began to speak a bunch of nonsense. God, it would have been better if we had remained in the wilderness. Here we are. We're being destroyed. God, it would have been better if you'd never brought us into this place. God said, you know what? I've heard enough of this. Get off your face. It's time for you to get up and get moving. Quit moaning and rolling around and complaining about what you've been through. There's still a victory in front of you that's calling your name. Get up. Get moving, get back on track with a victory that I have planned for your life. And he did. And guess what? They had victory after victory after victory after victory after a miserable defeat. And I want to tell you, if you've had a low-level defeat, that's not your end. You've got so many victories in front of you, and they're all calling your name. They're all calling your name. Now, if you've done something along the way, that created this defeat, repent of it, like Joshua and these leaders did. If you're willing to seek the face of God and to really hear what He has to say, God will identify the source of your failure, and that will just help you. That'll just help you. But when God reveals it to you, don't roll around and complain and groan and be sorrowful about it forever. Just repent of it and get off your face and get back on track with the next victory. That's the will of God for your life. Amen. Hey, remember, I'm offering you my series called God Has Given You the Victory and my book called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the truth that you've got a good plan for every one of us. And you're telling us to get off the ground, get our face out of the dirt, and face the next victory with confidence. We thank you for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. I'll see you in the next program. Rick Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity.